there's a very interesting passage in Job's story that says that in everything he went through, as you might know the story of Job, that he, out of the blue, lost all his assets, ten children, in a tragedy, in an accident, he lost his health, sick from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, he lost it all. He just didn't lose his life and the devil allowed the wife to be alive to harass him. The holy text says, In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. It's quite interesting. Because usually when we talk about sins, we think of those serious things such as adultery, murder, theft, among others, which are very serious, capital sins. But little do we think or remember the lips can also sin, the mouth as well, and how the mouth sins. Actually, the mouth is one of the main instruments for sin because human beings do not understand the power of word. If they understood, they would use their tongue more carefully and wisdom. So, Job did not sin with his lips. I would like to give you three examples on how you can sin with your lips. You, all of us, we can sin with our lips. And to allow our lives and the lives of others to fall into mistakes. Let's go. First example on how to sin with lips is when we speak ill of others. Everyone knows that to speak ill of others is not noble, it's not something worthy, but how many of us find ourselves criticizing, using our tongue to hurt by speaking ill of someone? Just a little word, just a little criticism. The person usually is not present, but in private, in the car, at home, or in a private conversation over the phone, they go and give this little criticism. So and so is like this and that. They criticize someone with their tongue, usually criticizing, giving, omitting an opinion loaded with bad feelings against them because usually you don't like the person so it's not enough for you to not like because not to like so far it's not a sin each person has their own tastes and what they like but to try to reduce the impression of the person before others, this becomes a grave sin. Because you are hurting the reputation, the good name of that person. Maybe you're changing the way of someone looking at another and bringing an information that is a mere feeling, opinion of yours. One thing is a fact. The serial killer is an assassin. I'm not talking about an opinion, it's a fact. Because he killed, I'm describing what he did, what he is. But when you speak about your opinion, I think that this person is too proud. Because sometimes you are jealous of the person's intelligence, jealous of their capabilities, because you see that they are more capable than you, then you feel bad, and you end up criticizing them as a proud person. This is your opinion. So you are sinning with your tongue, with your mouth. So, a good practice is for you to not speak ill of anyone. Don't speak ill of anyone. Don't do that, because who is sinning is you. Before your word hitting the other already hit you, because the moment you said 
you already sinned. You were the first one harmed. Second way that we misuse our tongue is when we speak ill of ourselves. When we put ourselves down. When we reduce our capabilities, sometimes with a false modesty, false humbleness, I'm like this, I'm like that, always putting yourself down. And you end up bad-mouthing yourself without being aware that words have power. And you end up believing in what you've said. Because if you will believe in someone, you will believe in yourself. You will believe in your own opinions. So if you believe that you cannot do it, that you are a burden, that you're just bothering others, you are inconvenient, then you will act as such. Because you believe in that. It's so much so that you said that about yourself. In this case, you should not even think about it. Unless it's a truth about you. Let's go back to the example of the proud person. Let's say that you are proud. You tend to be proud. When you get it wrong, for example, you cannot say, I'm sorry. You cannot admit your mistake. This is pride. You know you're wrong, but you keep a stiff upper lip and you do not accept that you are ever wrong. Then, when you say, I'm proud, you are admitting your mistake, you're confessing a truth that must be changed. It's the first step of change, recognizing that you are wrong. So this is important. It's part of repentance, recognizing, confessing your sins. But neither criticizing, I cannot do this or that, and you diminishing your qualities, nor increasing your flaws, because you are feeling bad for others or things like this. This you shouldn't do. The third way that we misuse our tongue, and we sin with the tongue, with the mouth, is when we speak the opposite of what God says. I see many single ones saying like this. I will speak about those who call themselves Christians. I'm not even going to talk about those outside. Those from outside, we don't expect them to agree with the word of God. Let's speak about those of the faith. You who say that you believe in God. I've seen many single ones proudly saying, it's good to live alone. I don't want to get married. I don't want to be with anyone. It's good to live alone. They're lying. I'm sorry. You can even do well alone. You can define by doing well alone, not being desperate to get married, not being depressed because you are alone. I'm single. This I understand. And this can be true. It has to be true for you who believe in God because the presence of the Holy Spirit, the companionship of God, help us. Nobody needs to be desperate on getting married. And also understand that not everyone was made for marriage. I also understand this. Jesus said, marriage is not for all. So not everyone were made for marriage. And there are those who are, well, they don't want to get married. Not because they are hurt, afraid, hating men, traumatized. No. They simply decided like... Apostle Paul, for example, they want to serve God, they want to live their lives alone, not for resentment or fear, but a personal decision. I understand this. I'm not talking about these people. I'm talking about those who are sick, with traumas, unresolved issues within them, and proudly they say, it's good to live alone. They're contradicting the word of God that says, it is not good that men should be alone. But many contradicted. Many go against 
O God says, the word of God says something and they say something else. God says, forgive, and they say, no, this one cannot be forgiven. No, I don't forgive. So they contradict the word of God. What God says, the truth that he says, he comes and says something else. So you are sinning with your mouth because you are disagreeing with the word. You're not going to get too far. For you to argue with God and still think he's wrong, it might be that you are sinning with your mouth in one of these three ways, speaking ill of others, of yourself, or disagreeing with the word of God. Job, in all, he did not sin with his lips. The word says that the man who does not sin with their lips is perfect. Maybe if you want to make your life better, a good place to start are in your thoughts, what you speak out of your mouth through your lips. Did you like this? Would you like to hear it again? Listen to it as many times as you need until this content becomes part of you. Don't forget to leave your like, comment and share. See you next time.